sir. Yes, there are five layers of epidermis, and uh, before that, there is a division among them also. One is germinative, that is inter innermost layer, and another one is keratinization. Like this is the process, this is the function of these five layers. Keratinization. So, in case of germinative, we have three layers from internal to external. Okay. So, the innermost layer is stratum basal, and next to it is stratum spinosum. And here only two. And here, in case of keratinization, we have three layers stratum granulosum. Next comes stratum lucidum. And so, here these two layers are mainly associated with germinative function. Layers are associated with keratinization function. And uh, here, you people should know only few things that is, in case of stratum basal, this is the innermost layer. And in stratum basal, we have melanocyte. You know this melanocyte gives color to the skin by the by product producing the melanin pigment. And this basal layer also have another one type of cell that is Merkel cell. So this is a sensory cell which receives the touch stimulus. Okay. So we will be discussing it later. And in case this spinosum is considered to be the thickest layer. And here in case of spinosum, we have langer hand cells. So this langer hand cells are nothing but the tissue macrophages of skin. Like your body has its own macrophages. Of liver we have kaffir cells so similar pattern in case of skin we have hair hand cells okay then comes stratum granulosum and this layer specific function is it is water impermeable it won't allow the water to come and go inside and outside and then comes stratum lucidum this is mainly seen in palms and soles and at last comes the stratum carnium which is the most superficial layer so this is all regarding the epidermis okay so you can remember these five layers with the help of one mnemonic. Let me tell you. Boys, say, girl. Cute. I'm sorry to all the boys. Uh, it's just for remember. And say, yes, sir. Then G for granulosum, then N, C panium. So this is how you can remember the different layers of epidermis from innermost layer to the outermost facial layer. Okay. Particular details regarding the epidermis, which can be asked in the MCQ part. So in case of epidermis, we have three different like patterns. Those were, like we can say it as surface markings. Case of epidermis, we have tension lines, then flexure lines, and then papillary ridges. So here, mainly this papillary ridges have some specific importance because they only form the fingerprints. Our fingerprints are mainly based on the papillary bridges. Okay, you just remember this. In epidermis, we have surface markings, papillary ridges, which is another than the fingerprints through this only we are getting our fingerprints and so simple in case of we have cells and the basal uh, lamina or basement membrane will be there cells will be there and basement membrane will be there so uh, there should be something to address these things like uh, there should be addition between the cells also and that between the basement membrane and the cells also in case of epidermis so the major addition is by two different proteins one was desmosome Desmosome. So there are uh, different types of proteins that's inside these things. So we are not going in detail. So this desmosome mainly acts between the cells. Okay, cell to cell adder is through the desmosome. And in case of hemidesmosome, it is basement membrane. Like this addition is mainly focused by hemidesmosome. Problem in the desmosome and hemidesmosome be lack of adherence and because of the lack of adherence this cavity will be completely filled with the fluid leading to one particular skin fem figures you might have here there are a lot and like uh, there are, uh, around five to six major type of fem figures so in case of desmosome if there is any problem in the desmosome that may lead to ig figures or bullous fem figures there is no need to go in detail i'm just so in case of uh, desmosome we will be getting bullous uh, like bullous impetigo and igg fem figures and if there is any problem in the Hemidesmosome that will lead to bullous femphigi. So these different types of femphigus is mainly because of the lack of 
suggestions in the epidermis leading to the condition. So now it's regarding the special cells in the epidermis. So we have talked regarding the melanocytes, I think we can we have talked regarding Langerhans cells, then we have talked regarding the Merkel cells. So all these cells belong to epidermis only now. So now we are going to discuss the important points regarding those cells. First comes the keratinocytes. And these keratinocytes form the major portion, like around 95 percentage of epidermis is formed of keratinocytes only. Like here, these keratinocytes contain this filigrin, which is none other than the keratin filaments. So here, this keratinocytes will be having the keratin filaments filigrin, and uh, this filigrin helps in the maintaining strength of the epidermis. It is mainly because of the filigrin melanocytes. So these cells are very special type of cells because these cells are completely originated from the neural crest. In case of embryology, we should know where the cells are getting originated. So this melanocyte is having the specific origin and this is important in MCQ. So this is arising from the neural crest. Okay, these cells are arising from neural crest and everyone knows that these melanocytes produce melanin which forms the pigment of skin and this helps in the protection of skin from UV rays. Everyone knows. And here there is one ratio that is epidermal melanin unit. So you should know the ratio only. Epidermal melanin unit. There will be ratio of one melanocyte which is completely surrounded by 36 keratinocytes. So this is how this uh, epidermal melanin unit will be present. And mainly the color of skin is determined by the presence of more this epidermal melanin it is not based on how many melanocytes are present like it is about the combination of both the melanocytes keratinocytes like if uh, if the if our skin is having more epidermal melanin unit then our skin will be more darker okay so this is important it is deriving from the neural crest and uh, this epidermal melanin unit is of 1 is to 36 ratio so then comes Langerhans cells. So already I had told this is a tissue macrophage. Langerhans cells. So this is none. This is mainly derived from bone marrow. Bone marrow derived cell. And it is an antigen presenting cell. So whenever there is any antigen, this macrophage is like uh, macrophage's main activity is to do the antigen presenting, and uh, it will be presenting it to the immunoglobulins. So this is how this uh, Langerhans also acting as antigen presenting cell. And this Langerhans cells are mainly present in stratum spinosum, which I had told already, it is present abundant. And if we are examining this uh, Langerhans cells, inside we will be having the tennis racket-shaped Birbeck granules. This is important MCQ in pathology point of view also. Yes. It is derived from the bone marrow and it is an antigen presenting cell and it is more commonly seen in stratum spinosum. And uh, this uh, cell will be having tennis racket-shaped Birbeck granules inside the cytoplasm. Then comes the next cell. That is none other than Merkel cell. So this cell is of ECML in origin. So this melanocytes are more important than the embryological origin. Though that is from the that is from the neural crest. Okay. And here this Merkel cell is of ectodermal in origin and it is a neuroendocrine cell. Neuroendocrine cell. So this is present all over the skin and whenever there is any or touch stimulus that will transmit the spinal cord through the sensory pathway and that will brain when it is carried from the uh, spinal cord to the brain and this is slow adapting there are a lot of different types of uh, mechanoreceptors so slow adapting type 1 mechanoreceptor this Merkel cell is having this mechanoreceptor and the question will which type of sensation will be carried by the Merkel cell that is carried out okay and here this Merkel cell mark cytokeratin so in case of uh, if we want to uh, know the activity of uh, melanocyte we used to and in case of melanoma also yes and it as a marker to identify the disease and here for Merkel cell the marker is cytokeratin 20 so this is all regarding the Merkel cell so now we are moving towards the dermis one is superficial one that is Papillary dermis, 
and another one is deep reticular deep reticular dermis so here whenever uh, like uh, the basic problem with the dermis we had seen wrinkling of skin is mainly because of the elastic fibers present in the uh, dermis getting atrophied atrophy of yellow fibers that is causing the wrinkling of skin so there is one another condition which you can commonly see in case of pregnant women which is associated with uh, dermis pregnant like similar to this condition pregnant women used to have one particular condition or uh, even in ob we can see that condition okay so the answer is stria gravidorum in case of pregnancy it is of stria gravidorum so this will also be associated with dermis and now is regarding the epidermis outermost layer then comes the innermost dermis and below the dermis we all know that there will be a layer okay so this subcutaneous fat is also fanny plus there is one important thing so in allergy we had seen urticaria and angioedema so the major difference is we know that in case of angioedema and urticaria mainly it is because of the involvement of mast cells which release histamine leading to the con so what happen if the mast cell is getting breakdown subcutaneous fat mast cell in fat then it will lead to angio and if this uh, mast cell is getting break dermal layer then that area this is one of the interesting fact i came to know while going through this because of the deficiency of c1 is in okay this is edema so try to remember these things this is regarding the panniculus and here another two uh, important mcq point of view related to the panniculus so here in case of this there are two things that is panniculus adiposus this is nothing but the subcutaneous fat only and this is not seen in like this is absent in few areas. so this panniculus adiposus is absent in case of eyelid then scrotum where we can see hydrocele and in case try to remember these exceptions doctors so mainly for the layers i will uh, check about uh, and then another one similar terminology that is is carnosis don't confuse it with the muscle like this is a vestigial muscle okay vestigial you know that uh, there is no use at all it will be presenting without any use like so here this panniculus carnosis is a deep vestigial muscle okay so there are three uh, different muscles present in our body like different muscles which are of vestigial in nature platysma which is around the neck and this is a muscle okay somewhere uh, i was asked the uh, platysma is a muscle or a tendon or some question was there fascia like that so this is a vestigial muscle and this term panniculus carnosus also and the next muscle palmaris brevis this was very new to me palmaris brevis and last at last comes the platysma muscle which is present in the down like in the face of the scrotum okay so platysma muscle so these three are the Uh, subcutaneous muscles. So one is platysma, and the another one is maris brevis. Then comes the platysm muscle. Okay, doctors. So now I have questions for you. I will be writing different types of scales, and you can guess the condition and let me know. So if a condition is having yellow or greasy scale, what what skin condition you will think about? Yellow, greasy scales, very greasy is none other than oily. If uh, you are thinking regarding oil. then you can correlate with uh, some disease condition in our uh, which may start from our scalp if we are having yellow greasy scales it is associated with seborrheic dermatitis simply you can think about uh, uh, dandruff but uh, dandruff and seborrheic dermatitis are little bit different so we will talk about it later so here if we are having yellow greasy scales then we have to think about seborrheic dermatitis and the seborrheic dermatitis is having its own uh, predilection sites of predilection based on that we can diagnose this condition then comes silvery or mica like scales one say this is more frequently seen condition it is psoriasis then comes collarate scales this condition like lesion will be like this and the scales will be like this and if you are pull, uh, pushing like if you are uh, stretching like uh, this lesion from both the sides now with the help of fingers this 
scales will be opening from one, one end and it will be adherent to the layer of the lesion in the one side and one end will be so that is pterias rosia so this i had told na like if if you are stretching the lesion with the help of uh, fingers from one side the scales will be opening in the one end and one end will be adherent to the uh, lesion so this sign is called as hanging curtain sign it's like a curtain hanging one side will be free and one side will be adherent curtain sign is seen in pteriasis rosia ductus so next leaf like scales is seen so these type of leaf like scales is seen in this folia is nothing but leaf so this morphology is also named based upon like the name is based upon the morphology of the lesion pemphigus foliaceus okay next powdery are brani fine scales this is seen in which condition pteriasis versi color where you can see this powdery or brani fine scales then fish like scales in which condition you can see fish like scales this is one of the genetic condition genetic skin condition which will lead to fish like scales ichthyosis vulgaris so the genetic condition and there are four to five major types in case of ichthyosis if we are examining the patient suffering from ichthyosis ichthyosis is nothing but dry skin only so here if we are examining the limbs of the patient we will be having fish like skin then this you people will surely say the answer where we see wickham striae condition wickham most uh, the lichen planus So these are all important MCQs, doctor.